If only there was someone offering advice on how to vote in the EU referendum. What do the leaders of the main political parties say? There's no pretending that Britain couldn't survive outside the EU. Of course we could. I'm concerned about the way the European Union is increasingly operating like a free market across Europe, tearing up the social chapter, damaging working class and workers' interests across Europe, hiding tax evasion in Luxembourg and other places, and secretly negotiating so, a transatlantic... Can I finish? Yeah. <laughs> secretly negotiating a transatlantic trade and investment partnership. Nothing has changed except what they say now. Boris is a controversial figure, and his colleagues leading the campaign to leave the EU are a questionable bunch. Their opponents are no better. There are good arguments for and against, but I find they tend to cancel each other out. When I look at the leaflet we've all been sent, I don't believe the government, but vote leave talk only about immigration and money. The most important issue isn't even mentioned. I don't know why. I didn't know what to do, but Obama gave me the answer when he said that leaving the EU will put the UK at the back of the queue getting TTIP. That's very helpful. Thanks, Obama. TTIP contained a law called an Investor State Dispute Settlement, now called Investment Court System, which is designed to protect foreign investors. It means companies can sue governments for acting in the interests of their people and against the financial interests of the company. How many people know what CETA is, that it includes ICS, and is about to become British law? Things are seldom what they seem, skim milk masqueraders cream. Let me summarise. TTIP had ISDS in it, but the EU Parliament, which is different to the EU Commissioners, said yes to TTIP, but no to ISDS. So ISDS was changed to ICS. CETA was approved prior to ratification, and that had ISDS in it. But now they're saying it'll be changed to ICS. CETA will have ICS in it. And once we have it, then we will be subject to ICS even before TTIP arrives. Whew, no wonder we didn't follow this. Governments have already been sued for deciding against nuclear reactors or for trying to save lives by discouraging tobacco sales. When they have tried to prevent pollution, they've even been sued for the profits the miners might have made if they'd been given a license to mine. Companies, and indeed individuals, have always been able to sue governments. All this trouble to set up a court specifically for investors is designed to make it easier for those companies. Bayer has been suing the EU for years for protecting bees from their insecticides. ICS is designed to make it easier for Bayer. Only foreign companies can sue, but in the modern world of multinationals, there will usually be a foreign partner. The co-chair of the Transatlantic Business Council has said this. This would apply to GM foods, fracking, or removing the EU ban on washing chicken carcasses as they do in America. In January 2015, the EU asked 150,000 people for their views on TTIP, but went ahead anyway. Three and a quarter million European citizens signed a petition against TTIP. The EU is allowed to ignore them. The real power in the EU, including the power to legislate, resides not with the Parliament, but with EU officials. They debate their laws in secret. We are not allowed to hear or read their deliberations. There have been battles going on in Europe which are rarely seen in British media. CETA is due to be ratified by the UK Parliament in 2017. It will contain ICS. David Cameron has been trying to rush it through as quickly as possible. Why does it matter? It has been promised that the NHS will be protected as a special case by ring fencing. This misses the point. Local councils and the people say no to fracking, but David Cameron is trying to enforce it. With an ISDS or an ICS, the fracking company could now sue for loss of the profits they would have made if they'd been allowed to frack. Some think that if the referendum vote is to leave, that it automatically becomes law. There first has to be a debate in Parliament. Then nothing will happen until our exit has been negotiated. This takes two years. Putting aside the scare stories on both sides, if we vote stay, it gives Cameron a mandate to carry on with his secret plans. When the EU wanted an extra £1.7 billion in 2015, Cameron refused to pay. 
He said he had negotiated that we would only pay half, and this after our general election. After being voted back in, he paid the full 1.7 billion. The EU kept quiet until after the election to help him deceive us. Voting to support Cameron would also harm those in Europe who want to reform the EU. The French and Dutch are talking of holding their own referenda. Some say we should stay in the EU to change it, but the many critics of the EU commissioners need leverage to force them to change the system. The UK is one of few countries who pay more than they get back. The Germans won't want or be able to pay for it all. There are a number of people here who have paid more than the British Prime Minister. Ah, oh, you might say, but how many? Four, ten, a hundred? Ten thousand. There are ten thousand people here paid more than David Cameron. That's one in five of everyone who works for the EU. Any reason for staying will exist only for as long as the EU commissioners want. Its politicians are secretly too close to its bankers and lawyers. Their planned European nation will have its power centralised and be authoritarian with state control over every aspect of life. Google the definition of fascism. Do you want to be ruled by Europe's commissioners who aren't democratically elected? If you do, do you want to know who influences them? Just leaving is not enough. What is good for Europe is good for the UK.